Hey guys, Chris Ashley. Welcome back to the channel Passion for the Wild and Wonderful. Today what I'm going to do is discuss some of the tips for being able to travel with firearms on an airline. And what I'm going to do is just try to walk you all the way from, you know, how to prepare yourself from leaving your home to arriving at your destination and uh, picking up your firearms. And at the end of this, what I'll do is share a personal story about my most recent experience at the airport that uh, definitely had me a little bit frustrated rushing and in a little bit of a panic that you might enjoy. So stick with me and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started and we'll just lay it all out for you. So number one, um, make sure that you review the TSA rules and guidelines. Also check out um, the rules and guidelines specific for the airlines that you're traveling, whether it be Delta or whether it be um, United. They might have a little bit of variation. I think the information I'm going to give you is probably pretty uniform across all of them. But just in general, I suggest that you go ahead and see in case some rules or regulations have changed, just go ahead and, and do a check on what the TSA and the actual airlines you're traveling with. All right, number two, um, you have to use a hard-sided case. So uh, when you're traveling with a firearm, it can't be a soft-sided case. Uh, can't be fabric or anything like that. You need to make sure that it's a very heavy duty, well built, hard sided case. You want to make sure also too that it has uh, multiple locking points. What you'll find is that they will try to open or pry open your gun case. By having those multiple locking points, you'll help to ensure that your, uh, your gun case will be able to pass inspection. All right, number three, uh, you need to make sure and store all your ammo in. I'll say uh, TSA approved travel containers. So with that, generally the general guideline to follow is, is that keep your ammo in the factory ammo boxes. Those are approved for travel and that way you won't get into any trouble when you're going through it. So make sure it doesn't even have to be a full box. If you have a partial box of ammo or ammunition, that's fine. Just make sure it's in the slots or the containers and it's closed up and it's properly secured in your gun case. All right, number four, uh, when you go to pack your gun case, make sure of a couple things. One, your gun has to be completely unloaded, okay? So with that, make sure that there are n no bullets in the chamber or bullet. Uh, make sure that the bullets are removed from any clips or magazines. Uh, so you wanna make sure you can still store your clips or magazines inside your gun case, but again, all the rounds, the ammunition, need to be stored in a factory box as an example, okay? So double check it, triple check it, quadruple check it, make sure your guns are unloaded and your clips or magazines are also emptied or unloaded as well. Number five, now we're getting ready to travel to the airport. So with this, take the extra time, go back through your case, make sure that everything is properly secured and stored. Your gun is unloaded, the clips and magazines are emptied and unloaded, and your ammunition is properly stored inside a factory ammo box, let's say. Um, also, too, at that point, again, we're making sure, as we said, it's a hard sided case. This here, for example, that I use is a Pelican 1750 case. I got it from Cabela's for like 270 bucks last year, but it has four different locking points. If it has four different locking points, have four locks. Now, what I ended up doing was getting a uh, set that had, I think, four padlocks with a single key. Now, you need to make sure that you are not using a TSA certified lock. This is locks that only you will have a key to. They are required to talk with you and get you to open up the case if they ever need it to be. So, you are to stay in ownership and in control of the key to your gun case. So, make sure that you've got it all secured, you apply all your padlocks, and now you're ready to go and travel in the vehicle. That way when you get to the airport and you're unloading your baggage, your gun case is already properly locked, secured, and you know that your firearm is properly uh, stored and unloaded. All right, number six. This might seem uh, you know, minor to a lot of the other discussion that's going on, but big key thing, arrive early. You know, in my opinion, I would arrive to the airport if you can, maybe even up to two hours early. Part of that is just giving yourself time to where you're calm, you're not rushing. In the event that something goes on, you have time to deal with it or handle it. You might have to talk with TSA if they need to look or inspect into your gun case. If there's any issues getting through security, 
It's always better, especially when you're going and dealing with carrying and trying to declare or check firearms, that you give yourself some additional time and it'll be well worth it. All right, so number seven, we've arrived at the airport early and um, we're ready to go in. Look, I, I know it can seem um, very intimidating to be walking into the airport with firearms. Just treat it like you're carrying a normal bag. Act like you're just a professional. You've done it a thousand times. You know, walk in calmly, take your time, get in the normal check-in line. As you approach the counter, make sure that you just quietly or calmly just let them know, say, I do have some firearms that are properly secured that I need to declare. Okay, you don't need to sit there and say, I've got guns. You know, don't, don't cause panic. Uh, in my opinion, um, I've traveled a decent amount with firearms on, on flights. I think a lot of them are really used to it, so it's nothing for them in general. As long as you don't come across as a person that's extremely uncomfortable, flustered, uh, that might be uh, something that raises a flag to them. So again, just calmly bring it up. Say, I've got you know X number of bags to check in. You don't have to say how many firearms or anything you have. Just say, I have secured firearms or a secured gun case that I need to go ahead and have firearms in and declare it. All right, so number eight. So you've arrived, um, you know, you've already declared your firearm, which would have been like step seven, your approach encounter. They're going to introduce, you know, hey, how can I help you? What flights, information, and you've declared. So number eight is, is that you're going to go through and they're going to give you some declaration tags here, okay? So what this is, is they'll give you a tag to fill out. It'll have your name, your flight, the date, um, associated tag number to it. They'll also fill out the other end, or you will, that will also have your name, flight, date, associated. They'll rip that off. This will be attached to your gun case, or in this case, it was um, attached to the outside so that it's clearly marked that it's a declared firearm. Uh, do not be surprised that they will ask you to potentially open up and inspect your case at which point normally they will also have another tag that will identify that the gun has been declared to be empty or unloaded and they'll drop that into the case, have you close it up, lock it back up, give you your claim ticket, immediately make sure you hold on to this. This is what is going to be part of what you're going to be using to claim it at your destination. And at that point, you know, they'll go through the weighing of uh, your case which for me again, I try to make sure that I'm trying to balance that I don't go into the oversize. Some of these um, hard-sided cases can get pretty heavy, especially depending on the number of firearms and amount of ammunition that you're taking. But at that point, they'll put it on the regular conveyor and it'll be sent back into the back there, at which point most likely TSA will go through an inspection of your gun case. All right, so number nine, one of the things that you need to do before you step away from the counter, they've given you uh, your tag for re reclaiming your gun at the or firearms at the final destination is to also go ahead and verify and ask to them where will I need to be going or where will I need to go to go ahead and claim my firearm at my destination. What you'll find is is that it should not be on the normal carousel with the rest of your checked baggage. It should be either in like oversized location, a special bag location, or it would be in the airline bag office. And so in my case is here of the very last um, time I traveled, it was in the airline bag office that was just located off to the side of the normal baggage claim area, um, just out from the uh, carousel. So make sure though, and go ahead and get out that information just so that you're not maybe a little bit confused or lost when you're at the destination trying to locate your bag. All right, so number 10. Um, one of the things to think about is after you've already declared your firearm and they've taken it into the back area, um, you'll then go through normal uh, security check and go in through in the regular entrance uh, into the airport. One thing you might think about is uh, to avoid potential hassle is just maybe stand around in the general area or just out, you know, off to the side, give it 10, 15 minutes or so uh, before you potentially think about going through security. Uh, make sure that you have your cell phone on you and that it is where you can hear it or feel it. In the event that TSA has an issue during the inspection of your gun case or that they ask to inspect it and they need you to come in and unlock it, you're readily available. You know, Make sure that you're also listening uh, to any of the speaker or intercom systems that might be in the airport in case they're calling your name 
asking you to come back up to the front desk. All right, so number 11, you know, we've, we've made it. We made it through, we checked in and declared our gun case and our regular check bags, whatever carry-ons we have, we went through security with, and we've uh, flown and arrived to our destination. So at that point, as I said, you know, you can go and plan on picking up your regular checked bags off the carousel and then follow the guidance that was given to you by the airline representative of either going to like oversized baggage, uh, special claims, or maybe to the airline's bag office to pick up your um, firearms. Now, when you go there, again, make sure that you have the tag that they gave you. What I normally do is try to just go ahead and immediately when they give it to me where I'm originally flying out of, I'll put it in my wallet uh, or take even my cell phone maybe and take a picture of it. Um, but have this and then also probably have your ID on in the case you might have uh, lost it or missed it and they ought to be able to go in you can say hey my name's chris ashley or whomever and i need to go ahead and pick up a firearm that i had previously declared on our flight and it should be a pretty seamless that a lot of times it, it appeared to me on this last time of travel that it was pretty much there at the special um, or the bag office special claims just as fast as what i saw the bags coming out on the um, conveying belt on the carousel all right so number 12 uh, this really is just a general comment that um, no, at no point in time really, unless you are being supervised or asked by an airline agent or a TSA agent, should you open up your gun case inside the airport. Or I would even say on, if you can, airport grounds or property. Uh, that's the idea of why I said that, you know, lock it, have it secured, have it ready to go. When you leave the house, you arrive on the airport property, you're able to unload your bags, go right in, if they ask you to open it while it's also being supervised and a person's there, so be it. But do not go in the middle of the airport and be rummaging through or trying to move and swap out things unless you have, like I said, someone there that is supervising it. It just might make people uncomfortable, might raise some flags, you might get some attention from security. It's just a good idea. Make sure that you've prepared yourself ahead of time that you do not need to get back into that gun case. All right, number 13, so if you are flying international and you're not just doing state to state, um, go ahead and make sure and review uh, the rules and regulations associated with the international travel or customs. Um, with it, when I've done it in the past, it is a little bit more intensive. I do have a little bit more paperwork that I have to fill out. Normally it's something that as I'm going across the border uh, on the airline, they will provide you potentially with documentation. If there's anything that you need to declare, you can go ahead and start filling out that form. And then when you're going through customs, again, it's similar to like when you were at the airport uh, main check-in counter. Hi, my name, here's who I am. I do have bags and I do have some firearms that are properly secured that I need to declare. All right guys, so what I wanna do now in general is just give you some tips uh, a little bit of background or idea of um, things again to just help you out with traveling. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the things is that you need to expect and why I, I suggested that you go ahead and if you have four locking points on your gun case, apply four locks. Um, what they will actually try to do is they will unlock your case, have it riding up against your locks that are secured and they will try to pry your case open to see if they can slip a hand in. What they are going to try to do is see is there any way or means for a person to be able to either put something into your gun case or pull something out of your gun case. And if they can do that, they will fail it. So for me, I, you know, and, and I know that there's been some questions on some of the things I'd read and have seen about that some airlines might sit here and require and say, if you have four places that can be locked, you are required to have four locks. Some might not. Some might just sit here and say, you just need to make sure that your gun case is properly secured, which is it is locked, but that it cannot be pried open to where someone can um, have access to anything that's inside. Okay, so another thing here too, as I said, look, be patient, do not rush, try to be calm. That's part of the whole idea of having this all planned out. Traveling with firearms should not be a big deal for you. It is something that you will see that it should go smoothly if you plan ahead and understand as you go through that you've got everything properly stored, properly secured, approach in a calm fashion. That's part of making sure you get there early so you're not rushing and that you don't come across like you have high anxiety or anything that's wrong. So again, just try to remain calm and you'll see that the process should go pretty smooth. 
All right, so another thing too that I think is a good idea is, so I was talking about this Pelican gun case. Um, what you're gonna find, as I said, depending on the amount or the number of firearms, the amount of ammunition, anything else that you might store inside these cases, they can get quite heavy. And as you're trying to lug or carry additional baggage, whether it be checked baggage, um, baggage that's carry on, as well as your gun case, it all adds up. Again, that can you know lead to some frustration and stuff that's going on as you're traveling. One of the things I suggest <clears throat> is as you're going through, in this case here, uh, I ended up picking up this Pelican 710, or 1750 gun case, and there's a story behind it that I'll tell you why this one's sitting here. But um, one thing I suggest is getting a wheeled gun case. So in this case here, this case has wheels, has end handle, has side handle, but I'm able to go ahead and roll it, kind of just like the same idea with your um, checked baggage. A lot, of, a lot easier to move and get through the airport if you're able to wheel it both in and out and while you're in there. All right, so the other thing I, I mentioned a little bit earlier as well is, you know, if you want to make sure and try to avoid overcharges, um, again, you can balance your weight as you're doing with your check bags, your carry bag, and your gun case. So some of the things that I did when I traveled as well was I balanced to where I weigh my gun case as it is on what I expect that I'm going to have in it. Of course, I'm weighing my check bags as well. And then if I need to move things around to balance it to try to stay under that normal, let's say 50 pound mark that some of the airlines put in place, I can do that. But just be aware too that, you know, depending on if you jump up into that oversized category, you will be paying extra when you're traveling. All right guys, so what I was gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go over my personal experience that I had here recently traveling with firearms. Um, <clears throat> it had been a few years since I had traveled but I've never had any issues with previous travel. So what I had is uh, this two gun, two sided gun case, and it had a, a single lock that went through. And um, you know, I, I followed all the procedures to where, you know, I had it locked when I arrived at the airport, my guns were unloaded, they were secured, walked up to the counter, I have firearms to declare, and um, the agent was great, you know, had me open it up, put in my slip, verified the gun was unloaded, put on my firearm declaration, gave me the tag, and said, you know, hey, have a great flight. So, um, at least one of the things for me that was critical at the, uh, at the end of this story is I had arrived to the airport, I think at least two, maybe two and a half, maybe even three hours early. Uh, fortunate, what I had planned on doing was just actually popping my laptop out and working um, for a little bit while I was just sitting there waiting um, just to make sure that I had plenty of time, I wasn't rushing. Um, there was another person I was going to meet to travel with as well. So again, I just I had that little bit of a buffer. I say little, but I had, I had a good buffer. So anyways, I'm, I'm sitting in there. I went all the way through security. I, I think maybe I just got my computer out and all of a sudden my phone starts going off. And I can't remember whether, oh, it was a phone call. And uh, it was the front um, front gate agent and they had said, hey, look, there is an issue with your gun case. We need you to come up to the main counter, the front counter. So I go back up, and what I end up finding is, is that um, what they end up doing is, is even though this is locked, they go ahead normally and they'll undo the snaps. And what they then do is they physically try to pry your gun case open. So in this case here, as you can see, this gun case can pry open enough, even with this in the locked position, that I can get my hand down in or out. Okay, that's going to be an immediate fail. But the other thing that ended up happening was, is they got to prying apparently, which is why this is moving even more. They pried so much <clears throat> that they ended up breaking the plastic right here of where the single lock was to where it completely broke and, and separated. So. I get up there and they're like, hey, your gun case failed. They were able to go ahead and get it open. And I'm sorry, but it's, it's not going to be able to pass. You're not going to be able to, um, to travel with that firearm. So I'll be honest, you know, my immediate response was, well, you broke my gun case. And also, too, just sheer panic of that I'm sitting here going, I have a flight that is scheduled to leave now in maybe two hours. And I'm at the airport with a gun case that doesn't work. What am I going to do? So fortunate for me was I was flying out of an area that I was familiar with. 
um, it was Charleston, West Virginia. And I asked the, uh, the attendant there because I knew that there was a Cabela's that was in the new corridor area that was maybe, I don't know, 25 minutes away, 20, 25 minutes away. And uh, that there was like a Dick Sporting Goods, a Gander Mountain. And I thought, man, that's a long ways. By the time I do everything, I don't think I'm going to make it. And so I talked with her and I said, well, what, what's my options? And she said, well, you know, today maybe is a Tuesday and I was flying through Spirit Airlines. Um, so they have a limited flight schedule uh, to where I was traveling to in Florida. And she said, I think you can probably make it. And so uh, this is... This is where the story really starts. So pretty much I, um, I rushed my way, uh, walking briskly uh, to the uh, airport uh, door. And pretty much once I got to the door, I was full sprint. Um, you know, they still had my check bags and um, I had my carry on still. But I was pretty much full sprint through the parking lot going to the garage to get to my vehicle jumped in my vehicle, quickly went ahead and brought up um, you know, the GPS or the map to see if I could find a faster route to get to Cabela's. And uh, you know, I, I made Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt look bad on a road course getting to that Cabela's uh, because it was everything I could do to get there as quick as I could. Make it there. So literally, I get into Cabela's, which I am familiar still with that Charleston Cabela's, and I run back to the gun cases. And it was one of those times, too, that there was just nobody around. And I'm looking at all these different gun cases, and pretty much, you know, what I'm wanting to ask is, what's the best gun case that you have? And just point me to it and let me go. So I start looking and I start seeing the Pelicans and some of the other different ones that they had. And, and there might have been one that was a higher end um, dollar one than it. But I looked at the Pelican. Um, I knew I had some history or knowledge that Pelican was supposed to be a good gun case. I went off the price tag as well, that it obviously wasn't a cheap um, gun case. I saw that it had four locking points, it had multiple handle carrying, and it had the wheels. And I thought, you know, and when I opened it up, it had extremely good foam um, cushioning and padding inside. So, anyways, I grab it. So then immediately on my head is, I need locks. Well. I run straight up to the counter to Cabela's. I'm out of breath there for the checkout. And I'm like, I need locks. Where do you have locks? And I'm trying to explain to him. I'm like, look, I'm at the airport. My gun uh, case has failed. I'm ready to fly out in just over an hour now. And I need to get locks and I need to get out of here. And they're like, well, the, a person back there should be able to help you. I think we have locks. So again, I go running clear back into the gun area again. No one even around, no one to help, no one to talk. And I'm not blaming Cabela's. It was, you know, I think we were also partly in the time as well with COVID that um, there just wasn't a lot of people. And so I end up panicking and, and running out. And they're like, did you find what you need? And I said, no. But I knew when I drove in that there was a Lowe's, I think, right next door. So I go flying down to Lowe's and literally go running in full sprint again into the store and you can tell people are kind of like what's going on and i'm like real quick hey i'm trying to catch a flight i need to get some locks for a, a firearms gun case point me to your locks where do i need to go you know they tell me what aisle i go sprinting down again um, part of what i was looking at quickly was just trying to estimate you know maybe like with my finger of okay i know that the whole size is roughly this I want to make sure and have a lock that pretty much fills that up 100% versus like a small little luggage lock um, to again understand that I want to make sure that they don't have the ability to gap that case and get their hands or fingers in. So I grab the locks, come running back down and it was hilarious because at that point I think the guy had realized that this guy is in a major rush. He was quickly just grabbing my locks scanning them real quick, paying, you know, take my payment real quick, and boom, I was running out the door. So yeah, if you happen to have me on security, you'll see me out there in the Lowe's parking lot. I'm pulling my gun out of this gun case, or both guns. I'm putting it in this gun case, <clears throat> trying to get all the paperwork switched over, try to get it locked up. Fly back to the airport again. Again, running down through the parking lot practically until I almost get to the, uh, to the airport doorway or entrance way, slow myself back down, try to get a little bit of composure, calm myself down a little bit, 
and um, get back up in line. Now, this is where one of my tips came from earlier that it never even hit me until later, and it's part of that whole rushing uh, that goes on that you just kind of, I don't know, you just kind of get in your own zone, your own mind. And what I hadn't realized was some of my firearms paperwork on like the decoration and tags that they had given me, I had stuck inside the new case and I had locked it. Well, what I should have done is just waited until I got up to the counter and with them supervising, unlocked and opened it and handed or, or, or got whatever necessary paperwork out. Well, fortunately, no one panicked, no one tackled me, no one went on. But as I was in line, I just stepped down real quick on the ground, laid my case down, unlocked it, flipped it open, grabbed my paperwork, closed it real quick, and locked it back up. But now looking back with hindsight, that was a big no-no. And I'm sure I could have got in severe trouble. Um, and who knows, maybe next thing you know, someone screamed guns and a security guy holds me at gunpoint or tackles me. Is worst case things I'm thinking, or maybe shot. But anyways, uh, it was good that I, I got back. Um, she remembered me. We went ahead and, and transferred uh, over the paperwork again. Just took the same information <clears throat> that we had filled out earlier, secured it to this one, um, put it in, and then um, I went through security, had no issues, uh, arrived at my final destination, was able to pick it up like it was, and, and had no other issues. But um, when it was all said and done, when I went back through security and sat down, I think I was loaded on the plane 15 minutes later. So that's a long story for where I sit here and I tell you, two hours, maybe even three hours arriving at the airport or, or airport early is not a lot. So as I said, in my case, I was extremely fortunate that I had a sporting goods store area, uh, an area that I was familiar with. Um, and then I'd got there early enough to where I was able to go through everything and, and not have any other issues. Otherwise, like I said, I think it was 15 minutes and I was, I was loading on that plane by the time I made it there. So I did not have a lot of time to spare and it was fortunate that I had people that were willing to help me and were patient with me as well. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, it's just something I wanted to convey to you all uh, from my experience and some of my learnings of things that can help you so that you don't run into that kind of issue. Or if you do have any kinds of issues, you know how to properly handle it. Give yourself the extra time. Um, you know, that might even be something, as I mentioned, that you might even also scope out the general area that you're traveling out of or to in the event that there is some kind of a similar issue with a gun case that you know how to respond or react. That you know that there's a Bass Pro or a Cabela's or a Gander Mountain or what other sporting goods store close or nearby and that you can know where to go or how long it's going to take you to go get there to get something if you need it. Um, so whether that would be locks, gun case, what have you. So again, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, um, you know, hey, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and uh, I'll be bringing you more content. I appreciate you joining me, and again, my name is Chris Ashley, and this is Passion for the Wild and Wonderful.